is Lime Psych, and in this video we will be looking at the last years of Henry VII's reign. So Henry VII had had four children who had survived childhood and these included Arthur, Henry, Margaret and Mary. And the one who was meant to be the heir to the throne was Prince Arthur, who was born in 1486. Now he was given a prince's education and was also given his own court at Ludlow in Shropshire. However, he died unexpectedly in April 1502, and in 1503, Elizabeth of York died soon after giving birth. Edmund had also died in childhood in 1500, which meant that the Tudor dynasty was fairly fragile at this point, and it was all left with Prince Henry, who ultimately became Henry VIII. Now this raised the issue of what would happen if he died and it also worsened relationships with Spain who Henry VII had negotiated the marriage of Arthur to Catherine of Aragon. Now they had married the year earlier. And this um, worsened the relationship with Spain because marriage alliances were used an essential part to international diplomacy and monarchs used them to enhance their power and influence. And even after Arthur died, Henry tried to organise a marriage between Prince Henry and Catherine of Aragon. However, King Ferdinand disagreed with the size of Catherine's dowry, and this marriage would have required a papal dispension from the Pope. So this marriage was only completed in 1509 after Henry VII had died. So Henry VII did organise a few other marriages, including uh, the marriage between Margaret, his daughter, and James IV of Scotland. And his daughter Mary would also marry Louis VII, who was a king in France, but this was in Henry VIII's reign. Now Henry VII did try to remarry after the death of Elizabeth of York, um, but nothing came of this. So the death of York, um, the death of Elizabeth of York also robbed Henry VII of some of his Yorkist support. And there was some fear about certain Yorkists, such as the Earl of Suffolk, also known as Edmund de la Pole, Richard de la Pole, his brother, and the Duke of Buckingham. So this meant that he was lucky when Philip landed in uh, England in very unexpected circumstances, and he agreed to hand over the Earl of Suffolk. So in the latter stages of Henry's reign, he also introduced many harsh policies. And although his policies were fairly harsh at the beginning of his reign, he enforced these harsh laws more rigorously in the latter stages. And this was because of the sudden deaths of Prince Arthur and Elizabeth, as it exposed the weakness in the Tudor dynasty, and Henry VII made sure that the enemies were unable to exploit this weakness. And in the latter years, um, Henry used the council learning law more often under the control of Richard Empson and Edmund Dudley. And both of these searched for misdeeds among the rich. Now this may have been because of the weaknesses in the Tudor dynasty, or it may have been because of a change of personnel from Sir Reginald Bray. Now the also bonds were a big part, but in 1493, these bonds only accounted to £3,000, yet in 1505, this figure was £35,000, which is over 10 times as much. However, many of these offences were also falsified, and this was just a way of increasing revenues and decreasing the powers of the nobility. So, with Henry VII visibly ailing, many people also tried to position themselves effectively for the succession, because in February his health started to really deteriorate and he was hardly seen in public after this. And the people who tried to associate themselves with Henry VII were the people from the Council of Learned Law, such as um, Richard Empson and Edmund Dudley, and on the other side there was Henry's other advisors like Bishop Fox. Now eventually he died on the 21st of April 1509 and this was at the age of 52. Now at first no announcement was made on his death as Bishop Fox and Richard Weston with the help of his mother Lady Margaret Beaufort manipulated the succession to their advantage. So this meant that the king's death was announced two days later on the 23rd of April 1509. And potential troublemakers like Empson and Dudley were arrested and Henry VIII took to the throne. Now overall, Henry VII was able to secure some stable foundations of the Tudor dynasty. He was able to improve finances, although through dodgy means occasionally. He was able to defeat rivals, control the nobility and pass all this onto his son. 
However, when he died, there was limited mourning as he was respect he was more respected than he was loved. And many people looked forward to the reign under Henry VIII. And next lesson, we will learn about Henry VIII. So thank you and see you soon. Bye.